for example, or I'm an American, or English, or whatever. The temptation will be to say, look, he's a Filipino or an African like me, we have the same, but we don't have the same convictions and the same faith. I can tick all the boxes, profession there, but there's one big box that I cannot tick. Not a big <coughs> What would you do? And in that situation, Paul says, God is faithful. Because he has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. You know what fellowship is? Fellowship, the word fellowship, koinonia, is to have in common, to share in common. It is a relationship that is deeper and describes what we share in common in Christ. So he said God is faithful. You might be tempted to say, it's a blessing of God to go for that one because maybe God just brought him on my way. But maybe if you're a Christian, you will hear the scripture in your mind. Do not equally go with an unbeliever. The first time you hear it is loud. No. The second time you hear it, do not equally go with an unbeliever. No. And they are saying, but, but I know, um, I know Emmanuel who, you know, and then you start. The second, the third time you hear it, it's quieter. But he's a good woman, he's a good man. The fourth time you hear it, it's even quieter. And quieter, quieter. And they will say, Pastor, but I have met this young woman. I've met this young man. He's really, really wonderful. But my problem is, but you know what, Pastor? I believe that it's God who is. Sometimes what makes us decide against what we know to be true in Christ is fear of God's faithfulness. The same thing will happen if you don't have a job and you have to pay your rent at the end of the month. It is difficult to say that God is faithful. So you take your own matters into your own hands to deal with it in your own way. That's why I said to you, you might look like a Christian, or we might look like, like Christians. We attend church, and the focus is the music. The focus is the preaching. These are good things, but the focus is on Christ. And you know what? If your focus is not Christ, and your focus is the music, the day that the music is not good, there's discontentment in your heart. If your focus is a friend, the day that your friend is does something wrong, there's discontentment in your heart. You know? But if your focus is Christ, then your relationship grows deeper and deeper, and deeper. And Paul mentions two things in verse 7, and I'll end with this. He said, you do not lack any spiritual gifts. The problem of the Corinthian church was that they focused on gifts and not Christ. If you read from 1 Corinthians 3, they were divided between Paul Peter Apollos. If you go to 1 Corinthians 11, they were fighting, even when they had communion. 
the rich were eating with them, and that one, and those who had spiritual gifts, and 1 Corinthians 14, the prophets, ah, they wanted to show, I'm a prophet, and each one would prophesy at the same time. It was confusion. No one cared about each other. If you went to the Corinthian church, believe me, you had healings and you had all kinds of things on the external. But if it comes to their relationships, they could not even wait for each other to share communion. They couldn't even wait for one another. And so today, as we end this, let me repeat what Paul writes here. God is faithful. And he has called you not into a church, okay, but he has called you into fellowship with his son Jesus, which makes you a church. It's not the other way around. And if we are in fellowship with Christ, then we will fulfill the mission to which he has called us. And our mission is to pray. On Sunday, it's good to meet as a church, but don't let the church only be on Sunday. Let it be every day. Let the Holy Spirit guide you every day. Not only because you are blessed, but because you're fulfilling the work that God has called you to. How many of you know what we are called to do? Matthew 28. Therefore, go, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. That is our call. If we have good fellowship, if we have everything but we neglect this, then we are not being faithful to what God has called us. Amen? Will He heal us? Yes. That is a given. Will we struggle? Yes. And He says, come and put your burdens on my feet for I care for you. But let us not take our eyes off Jesus Christ. You have been called into fellowship with Jesus Christ. Therefore, in any situation of your life, remain faithful to Him. And therefore, I will end with these words. Whatever you do, whether you eat or you drink, do it to the glory. Let us live by this every day. And there is grace, sufficient grace for us to go to Him whenever we fail. But know who you are. You are holy. Amen? Amen. You are sanctified. You have been made separated for God. And He will never fail you because you have become His child. Amen? Amen. And therefore, please live a holy life life. Live a consecrated life. Don't look at other people and judge them. Encourage other people in the Lord. And if you see the weakness of someone, it is not your responsibility to put them down. It is your responsibility to lift them up. And be generous to Christians. Be generous, be forgiving, be loving, be caring, and always seek for peace. For this is the characteristic of a church. And this is what people are looking for nowadays. People are looking for, not for, not, not for a church, but people are looking for a place where they can know God and they can fellowship with God through you and believe me people see very quickly so be who you say you are
you are a Christian, be a Christian. If you fail, admit your fault that you have failed and go for God's grace. Amen? Amen. And live in peace with all people. Live in peace with all men. For Christ is coming soon. And we have no time to waste. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank